Welcome. Thank you for coming. It's great to see you all. Some of you are back from last week. We had beginner last week, or should I say introductory, and this week we're going to take it to the next level. Uh, today's webinar is brought to you by MCSC Women's Business Center. We're a nonprofit business center serving entrepreneurs in Slow, Kern, and Monterey counties. We provide support to individuals looking at self-employment as a viable option. We help startups and existing small businesses with mentoring, entrepreneurial training, courses in English and Spanish, and classes like this. Our consultants can help you with budgeting, marketing, social media, website development, HR, tax planning, you name it. If you need, have a business need, we can probably help you with it. Our contact information is on the screen and I will put it in the chat box shortly. I would like to thank Stacy Aragon for presenting today. Stacy has a BS in business administration with a certificate a concentration in entrepreneurship from Cal Poly. She's passionate about helping entrepreneurs who have the heart and perseverance to pursue their dreams. Stacy has knowledge in all aspects of business from strategic planning, marketing, finance, HR, organizational behavior, and organizational development. We're thrilled she's here again. So before we get started, I'd like, just like to remind you to mute your phone and limit your distractions. Your cameras and audio are off, uh, but just for your own environment, you probably wanna keep that distraction free. We'll be taking questions through the chat box and we are recording this, the link will be sent to you once it's processed. So we have a quick poll we would like you to take so we can find out how you heard about this so we can continue to reach you. 30 seconds, please go ahead and take that. All righty, thank you so much. It looks like 67% of you saw this on the newsletter. Some of you from the Chamber of Commerce, so that's excellent. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to hand you over to Stacy. Go ahead, Stacy. Thank you, Barbara. Can you hear me all right? You're yes. Good? Perfect. All right. I always want to check my mic and technology's working here. Um, thank you all for coming to this webinar and taking the time to be with us today. This is Design Outside the Box with Canva. It's a continuation of last week's webinar that we did uh, where we learned key elements in becoming a brand that people like, know, and trust through our campaigns, through um, brand consistency, uh, clear call to actions, and balanced campaigns. This week, we are going to scratch the surface of the psychology behind branding. Uh, we will also be covering a few best practices for videos in case you like to um, use video ads. It's a hot thing right now. Um, we'll also go through a live demo, um, which will expand your creativity and give you some ideas of how to kind of stand out as a small business on social media and whatever, whatever platforms you use online, even your website. Um, and then to close, we'll go over some advanced design tips and workarounds with Canva. Canva has been an amazing company and I'm always, always ranting about how awesome they are because they implement the changes that we wanna see and that we've had to work around for years. So they're quickly um, implementing those changes so that your design experience can be very, very easy. So they've done a great job of that. Um, and just before we get started, this is an hour and a half. If you have to go to the bathroom, go ahead. <laughs> you don't need our permission. Um, and if you can't make it through the rest of the webinar, we're happy to give you the recording. I will be asking some for some participation. So we'll be utilizing that chat box throughout the presentation. And I think that's it. We'll have time for questions between each layer of design and each part of this uh, presentation. So let me go ahead and share my screen here and get to my presentation on Canva. Okay. All right, can we all see that? Perfect. Okay, so designing outside the box with Canva. So it's no surprise that we are emotional human beings, which means, which means that we make decisions based off emotions, sometimes consciously and sometimes uh, subconsciously. So, as buyers and consumers, there's that emotional aspect to choosing what we're gonna buy. Um, that, that's the same with branding as well. So your brand choices also have a little bit of a weight of emotion there. So that example or classic example of going to the grocery store and your kids 
are waiting in line. They see all the candy bars and then they start screaming and shouting for one. Well, my initial inclination is buy that candy bar out of fear for them not being quiet and maybe getting some judgment around from other parents and other people who don't mind their business. So that's just that simple classic um, example that really shows you that emotional impulse is part of the buying process. So keeping that in mind, when you are trying to promote your brand, when you're trying to promote a product or service, it doesn't matter. You are selling in, um, to the conscious mind, but you're also selling to the, unconscious, uh, the subconscious mind, sorry. And um, this just means that as small business owners, we wanna be very intentional about our campaigns that we're creating both print and online um, and just becoming and emphasizing a brand that we that our consumers will uh, like, know, and trust. That is the main goal. So <laughs> eventually when we do this periodically and we've been a brand and an established brand, we build a reputation, symbolization, and we want that to really be emphasized in this idea that we have our brand speak for itself. So in other words, make sure that what you're promising out to the world, you're also acting because um, we're, they're watching what you're doing. They're also hearing what you're saying. So let's keep that consistent. It's not just about what you say or what you do. It's a combination of both. So I have another example for you that I wanna show you. Um, and it's again, from Tide, I couldn't, I was telling Barbara this morning, I couldn't find a better one that captures what I wanna capture. So Tide is obviously one of my favorite brands. I do use it, but I just think that their advertising is bold in a very simplistic and clear way. So on, this, on the left side, you have 10 seconds to appeal to your consumer with print advertising create an experience through different elements. And then on the right side, you've got the actual video. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and that's about 30 seconds long. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this video real quick so that we can see how impactful it is. Although just four foot eight, Simone Biles is not to be underestimated. Despite her size, Simone is packed with power, refined, concentrated power. That's why she trusts Tide Pods. She knows small can be powerful. Tide, number one ring. So again, 30 seconds, very simple. I know it glitched out there for a second, but you get the gist of it. We are creating an experience through video and video just captures it so well because you have an element of sound you have, and then you have all of the elements of um, print advertising, but moving and it's just a complete like 360 experience. So um, for those of you who are a little intimidated by doing videos, uh, don't be. It's a, a very hot thing right now, and it really just helps capture that experience uh, that we want to provide for our consumers. Um, and then again, you have your print. So um, although it's not as comprehensive as the video, you can see with the word choice and the language that they're using, the balance of space, uh, the specific person they're using, and their product placement, we still get that experience. So not only does do these two campaigns work together, but they also work alone. If I were to see the video first um, and then see the, the magazine article or the uh, print promotion afterward, then I would remember that experience and I would remember um, what I saw and what stood out to me, right? And then vice versa, um, if I see that print, it's exactly the same message that they're showing to you in print and then uh, later on um, in video, small but powerful, that's my beauty. That's what Tide Pods is. And, and that's what you're gonna get each time that you order or that you buy from Tide. So that's what we're looking for here. So again, we're wanting to appeal to emotion and really create an experience that our consumers feel 
that they belong to, that will derive emotions that will drive them to action, to buying, to becoming a loyal customer, a long-term customer. And so how do we do this with, um, how do we do this with print uh, understanding what we do about psychology? And there are a few elements that you can actually use to help that storytelling ability. And um, we'll go through them right now. So the psychology of font. Each font has the power to evoke emotion. We just talked about that. Font is a key element to providing your consumer with the ultimate experience. So this is the part of the presentation where I'm going to ask for some, um, some input. So get your chat boxes ready. I have a question for you, um, just to understand our perception of font and how it makes us feel. So which of the following fonts gives you a, trust, uh, a sense of trust, safety, and integrity, and justice? So let's just say this is for the SLO Police Department. Um, which would you choose? Would it be A, B, or C? I'll give you a couple of seconds to, to answer there. We've got Bs, all Bs. Would anybody choose anything else? Get one C in there, Stacy. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> it snuck by. Right, okay, wonderful. So um, typically this, so right here, what this is demonstrating is that there is a generalized perception. And for me specifically, I would also pick B. And I believe that that has to do with um, structure, consistency, and just very um, straight. You know, you want something that's not too artsy, not too cute. You want something that um, really conveys that. So as you can see, most of you chose B. Um, so keep in mind when you're, when you're choosing your fonts, you wanna keep consistent with your brand and the feeling that you want your customers to feel. So next question, which font gives you a sense of early years, um, elementary learning and fun? So for an elementary teacher, for example, A, B or C. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. I love that. Very specific. Yeah, so we have mostly A's and B's here. And this, again, this illustrates a little bit differently um, that some people might gravitate towards a, a certain font than others. And so when you're deciding these things, and obviously most of us are already uh, established businesses, but if you are thinking about rebranding or just um, creating a different experience and sticking with that, I would highly recommend um, letting your consumers know um, what you're thinking and, and letting them be part of the process. So which of these do you think would be best for me as an elementary teacher? And you do that A-B testing and, and not only does that give them a sense of belonging and, and say in your company, but it gives you an idea of what the generalization is out there on your fonts regarding your industry, obviously. All right. So we're gonna move on to color, uh, the psychology of color. Um, and before, actually, before I do that, I do have one more thing to say about the psychology of text or typography. There is so much um, research out there and I would highly recommend and encourage you to look for yourself, especially um, with the different types and the font breakdowns and what they mean and, and what they represent, whether it's clarity, creativity, et cetera. So um, yes go ahead and do your own research on that. And if you find something that is super, super out there and helpful, share it with us. Um, next is the psychology of color. Uh, colors evoke emotion out of you, as well as the fonts. Uh, so red being passion, active, exciting, bold energy, youthful, uh, physical, pioneering. Pink is love, calm, respect, warmth, feminine intuitive, care, assertive, sensitive. Purple is deep, 
creativity, unconventional, or original stimulation, individual wealth, etc. Um, and then we have Navy, which is trust, order, loyalty, which is why we have police that wear Navy blue, right? And then we also have military branches with Navy and so you just think about the world around you and, and see, it doesn't only apply to what you're marketing and your business and the business industry, it applies to pretty much everything that we see around us. Uh, green is balance and growth and restore sanctuary equilibrium. We've got blues with spirit, perspective, content, control, and then orange with instinct, warmth gut reaction optimism. And you can see the big brands that actually utilize these. Um, and you can decipher for yourself whether or not that's how you feel about the brand. But there is psychology in the colors that you choose. So another example would be in and out red and yellow. Those combinations are supposed to have you um, just urgently go in and out which is basically exactly what they're called, in and out. They want you to get in, get out, and be happy with what they're providing for you. Next, we have um, another example of the psychology of color. So Apple, Apple is always using empty space, white space. Um, and that really attests to what they stand for, um, which is cleanliness and simplicity and elegance. And um, with the combination of elements that you're using repetitively, it starts to symbolize something and, and become associated with that symbolism. So luxury and tech leaders, innovation, those types of things. So you wanna think about, again, what colors and what experience, what emotion do you want your customer consumer to experience with your business? What do you want them to associate with? And all of these little, pieces of the pie are going to give you a whole feeling, a whole experience, and that vision that you have for your consumers. Um, so psychology of Im imagery. Let's see, context is everything in print, right? So even the imagery that you use is important. So which image leaves you feeling more pumped, left or right? more seconds. So we got a lot of right here, right? Got one left. Um, okay, so for me, I would also agree right. There's no right or wrong answer, but we wanna just kind of identify how we feel by looking at an image, right? So that we can understand how our consumers will feel. Um, with these two images side by side, you can see there's a difference in um, uh, darkness and lightness. Uh, there's a difference in what they're doing. Uh, their expressions are painting a picture. And even having both um, images have two people together, it's like a mob mentality that, that gives more feeling of, of being pumped and, and being ready and excited and just doing, right, determination. Um, and then the seriousness of their emotion and their face, and it's just, just a combination of everything that we're trying to use in our uh, promotions as businesses. We have to really pay attention to all aspects of your imagery to, to really captivate um, that experience, especially when it's a still photo and you're using print. Um, so that was one example. Uh, definitely the shading and the coloring and, and the smiles and group mentality and just everything. So even in this picture, for instance, if on the left, if, if that was what made you feel pumped, you can play around with filters, you can play around with the environment to make it a little bit more intense and intensified and um, just giving that feeling of emotion. And, and as you add the different elements like fonts, um, your filters, and actually the language that you use, you can still keep refining 
what you're trying to convey and what you want your consumer to experience. One more. Um, so again, in the psychology of Im imagery, um, which image fills you with wonder, left or right? <laughs> I like both. I know it's supposed to be tricky, right? Again, showing you that people have different generalizations, different perspectives. They associate different thing, things based on their background. So it's important um, as you can and as you see fits and as appropriate to uh, remember what your consumers like, what they value, what they see, how they see things. And for this example, you know, you have on the left a lot of context with just uh, the perception of how small a human being is to, to nature and what's out there. And you have just so much, um, so much in that background that speaks to you, that makes us feel smaller and that really helps us understand that perspective of the world and how much bigger it is than we are and, and how we see it through a bird's eye view, the colors and everything, the depth, it really, really speaks to me in that way. Whereas on the right side, obviously, who, would, who wouldn't want to go on a hot air balloon, right? That's pretty wondrous too. But if you see the frame of the picture and you look at it from a photography standpoint, there's not a lot there. So we're not exposing enough experience to, um, to really grasp that uh, emotion or that feeling of wonder. So uh, for me, if you were to position this photo a little differently or find a photo that actually has the perspective from the hot air balloon looking down or you know that has at least a little bit more landscaping and mountains or a beach or something that gives you a little more perspective it'll give you more um, more of that feeling of wonder right because most of this picture is all blue space and it doesn't speak as loudly as the picture on the left all right so moving on <laughs> Combining elements. So we let's say that we have a surgeon flyer going out print advertising, right? Which image would you choose? And think about the colors. Think about the colors. They're, we're wearing different colors. Male, I don't want to do the gender male versus female or anything like that. But think about the colors, think about the image, and then think about the font. Which two speak surgeon to you best? Which one would you like to operate on you? Let's say it that way. And we can answer this in uh, blue, white, you know, first font, second font. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I like the honesty there, Dee. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Okay, wonderful. So we're seeing a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different preferences, which is great because again, it just really shows that people take into consideration different details. And when you're trying to target your market, you need to understand what those details are, those values are so that you can hit them every time um, or at least generalize in the sense that you will um, capture more people that that uh, help your consumer feel like they belong with your company or that they resonate with them um, and that it's a brand that you like, know, and trust. So <laughs> thank you guys for your input. I really appreciate that. Those were just, um, you know, again, scratching the surface of psychology and, and how it really just um, is intermingled with the way that you promote and advertise your products and services. It doesn't matter. People are thinking of these things both consciously and subconsciously. And if we can take those two elements and be intentional with the way that we design our products and services and uh, print and, and social media posts, everything, then we can really um, hook our customers in and, and hopefully 
express to them that you want to buy with me because my experience is super, super um, beneficial and it's everything that you've wanted, right? All right, um, a couple of tips or a few tips before we move on on best video practices. Again, creating an experience um, with video can be simple, it can be complex, but what we want to do is want, we want to make sure that um, you show the people what they want to see in the next or in the first 10 seconds because their attention span actually drops off after that. You want to keep that video under 30 seconds, um, depending on where you are promoting your video ad. Uh, you do need to check with that platform to see what their um, what their limitations are for video ads. Some of them are 20, some of them are 30, and then some don't have. Um, and then again, always keeping in mind that um, it's all about learning and growing with your customers. So it's a trial and error process. Um, if you have lifetime customers, you wanna be in every stage of their life and you want them to feel relevant within your business and your, and your voice for your business. Um, so including them and understanding and really discovering how they feel or what, what attention um, is drawn by. So for example, asking about fonts is one way to do it or testing three different videos. Test a video for 10 seconds, test one for 30 and one for a minute. See which one has more reaction, which one has more engagement and conversion rates. So it's important that we understand as small business owners, since we have to do most of our marketing, we want to market with intention. We wanna market with a clear goal in mind. We also wanna market with clear expectations and metrics so that we can see how we're doing and we can improve along the way, being just like a, a model business like Canva, improving along the way, listening to your customers' voices and creating that loyalty. So moving on to the next part of our video, um, or sorry, our presentation here. Uh, on the left is what we did last week. It was an Instagram post and it did have a description, very short, um, but sh and very short and simple, we'll say that. Uh, and this week, we're actually gonna take three images to combine them, make a video and create a quick experience for um, a captivating call to action and yeah, I'm hopeful that <laughs> Canva can keep up with our design efforts today. We do have layer a lot of layering to do in this demonstration. Um, so with each layer, we will take questions and comments and anything else. Uh, I love having people that participate with me. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop out of that and go into my home. Can you see that? Well, yep. I don't, okay, good. Cause sometimes I toggle and then I lose you. So, all right. <clears throat> so we have this idea and usually when I come up with uh, promotions, whether it's on social media, video um, or just, you know, flat print, um, I look on Google and I see, and I, I searched depending on industry and what type of advertisement I search what's out there to get inspiration. You can also do that with the Canva templates. They have wonderful templates that make it very easy for you. Um, and then as far as this video goes, this was more of something that kind of was created from scratch. I liked the image that we produced in our last webinar and I wanted to use that and kind of uh, just beef it up a little bit more with some um, video movement, uh, music and et cetera. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, just real quickly, I did want to go and show you, where are you? Where did you go? I did wanna show you some of the uh, features we have for Canva and the different, um, sorry, the different options you have. I may just actually show you in demo mode. So I'm gonna go into here. 
I'll do an Instagram post size again. Um, and I'm going to create one from scratch here. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to go to uploads. There we go. So um, in our last webinar, we did a little bit of the basic navigation, but because this is intermediate to advanced, we should already know how to get, get through all of these tabs and find what we need. Um, as you can see in my uploads, this is what we're creating. Uh, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I did wanna go into more and show you some of these um, integrations that are utilized, especially when you start to get more advanced in, um, in Canva. Pixels, Pixabay, always a good place to find stock images for free. Embedding, um, we're gonna embed a QR code, which is basically the same as embedding Google Maps. It's super, super easy. Um, it's basically a plug and play on your website or the, the map, the Google map. Um, etc. Um, also, you have YouTube, so you can embed YouTube videos just like I did in my presentation. Flickr is another uh, stock photos. Um, and then brand fetch is something that I use a lot. Uh, this is for any type of brand that you're looking for. All you have to do is click on it and go to connect, and then it'll connect to brand fetch. And then you continue. It's very simple. And then you can find all of, well, not all of it, but a lot of the big name brands if you needed to use that. And we did do that actually on the last Canva uh, demonstration here. So anyway, back to uploads. Again, we're gonna take three still images and combine them to use them as a short video. Um, in the last webinar, we also talked about formatting your campaigns and making sure you outline your purpose and all of the campaign logistics. So last time we did um, hot yoga, an intro month of, uh, I think it was 1999 uh, for a whole unlimited uh, month of hot yoga from uh, April 20th to May Seventh. So this time we're going to do something a little different. It was thinking about something that's coming up and Mother's Day is coming up. So our campaign um, is going to be a promotion from now until Mother's Day. Uh, and the purpose is for conversion to get people to sign up and pay for the buy one, get one special for Mother's Day. The, the experience and the emotion I want them to have is just when I think about hot yoga, I'm thinking about um, freedom and flexibility and tranquility. And, and those are the things that I feel a mother would wanna feel and would actually get the experience of feeling with hot yoga. Some people might not see the same, but that's okay. Um, we're trying to catch those that do. Imagery, when we're working with, um, Social media posts, like I said, there are lots of elements that you can combine to make it feel, um, and not to make it feel, but to make to make it clear and bold and just uh, a clear call to action. Um, again, we want to beef it up and make it a little more round, a little more um, experience within it. So I'm thinking of the feelings of hot yoga and what that entails. And, and really what comes to mind is <laughs> steam and sweat and all of those nice things that help you really detox your body, right? They're not as appealing, but it can work. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first layer. This is the first layer. And I'm going to go ahead and add a page here. Okay, so the idea of this is very flat right now, but when we're done with it, it's gonna be pretty awesome. <laughs> so um, in this background, I actually wanted motion. And uh, again, experiencing, I love having motion and still photos together and combining them and creating something. You see them sometimes, I've seen them on Starbucks, um, Facebook and, and other 
uh, social media, big brands doing the same. So I want to kind of combine those two. You don't see them very much, especially with small businesses. Uh, so hopefully this helps you uh, expand your vision and your mind for your short clips and, and just, you know, rounding out your promotions. So I'm going to go ahead and go to, um, actually before, yeah, let's go ahead and go to videos. So I've done this before, right before our, our webinar. So I have them. Thankfully, I have the videos because usually what ends up happening is I can't find them when I need them. So this is what I'm using for the background here. And as you can see, it's yellow. And we just talked about the psychology of uh, color. And yellow isn't really something that I wanted to portray. I wanted to keep within the context of our color before, which is... I don't have it down here, but I had it in my presentation. We used a lot of purples, uh, dark purple, light purple, um, those types of colors. And I want to kind of keep to that color palette. Um, as you can see, this video is just flipped around because I want the steam to come up, right? We're thinking about steam, steam rises. I want that to be the background, but I also, want to change the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my document. I'm gonna change the color um, background. And as you can see with, with Canva Pro, they usually have the photo colors here um, and, the, and you can choose from them, right? So if we use the background like this color, maybe that will work. I don't know, we'll try it out. If not, I actually have the color code that I wanted to use from the beginning. Um, so we have the background color. Now we're gonna add the video. And so I'm gonna expand it by using the little knobs on the sides there, expand it to the square. And I'm gonna leave it just a little bit smaller so I can click on the background and lock it. And then I'm gonna expand this a little bit more. And then I'm going to go up to my edit bar at the top. I'm going to mess around with the transparency to see if I can get that same color. You can see the video is already becoming very transparent. I want it to be visual, visible, but I also really love that background color. So I think that's actually pretty good. So if we press play, you can still see um, the video working its way up. And this is something that I feel would be associated with steam, obviously. It doesn't happen that hotly, but um, it'll work. So if I double click on this image, I can actually move to the part of the video that I want um, because it's not big enough to show and display the whole thing. I do wanna kind of um, adjust that into the middle there. And then let's play it again to see where we're at. All right, so we've got it going up. I think that's pretty good. Um, so after we have adjusted our transparency and the size of our video, we're going to lock this layer um, and then we're going to work on the text here. So if you click into your document and then click or sorry, type T, it'll come out. And so as you can see, we have celebrating mom because this is a Mother's Day campaign. We want to go ahead and give um, credence to mothers. Celebrating mom. And I'm going to stick with the font that we chose last in our last webinar, which is Brittany. Love that um, for yoga specifically. I do want to make this bigger because I want to emphasize what we're doing here and why we're doing this campaign. So I'm gonna go up to the edit bar. I'm gonna type in 70 and then there we go. That's a good size. Um, one of the new things on Canva that I love is the text effects. So they've made it easier to use shadow and lift as you can see on the left uh, hand side, your edit bar has expanded there. Expanded there. You have glitch neon, you have curved curved is the one like 
this was the golden nugget for me because before this, you, you didn't have that option. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and it's gonna curve it for me. And the curve bar is right below right below the curve option. And you can play around with how big you want your circle. So for example, you can make it wider, which I tend to like. And I also like to kind of center it. So you've got your grid lines to help you there. And this is just amazing. It's a huge time saver because as I said before, um, <laughs> you didn't have this option. So what we had to do was we had to do each letter individually and curve it yourself. And it never came out as perfect as you would hope, but that's okay. So now that they have it, this is how you use it. It's such a great option, especially when you're making logos. Um, okay, so we've got that. Let's see here. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. And then, I think that's pretty good. I think maybe I'll just make it back to zero actually. Um, and then I'm gonna lock it. There we go. And then I have to add my logo. So we did talk about um, text hierarchy and using and utilizing different sizes to really convey the message of what's important here. Um, which is why we're going to have different size fonts. Uh, we also talked about um, placement. So how the eye visualizes and sees your promotional piece, your advertising piece. Um, your eye patterns go from an F, uh, F figure and sometimes an E figure and sometimes a Z figure. So product or sorry, text placement is very important, picture placement, logo placement, those types of things. We're just gonna put this one in the center because that's what we're centered on. This is, this is where you go to get the experience. So I'm gonna use those grid lines to get it in the middle there. I'm gonna lock it. And this would follow more of that F pattern. So you get the top cross and then that middle piece as well, excuse me. Next, we're gonna do Buy one, get one free this Mother's Day. So we're going to go ahead and click in our document and click T. Um, it's obviously saved to Brittany for me, but that's not what we're gonna use. We're actually gonna use um, the other font that we used in our, last, um, in our last demonstration here. So we're gonna go ahead and put buy one, get one. And then we're gonna go up to our edit bar. It's already saved what I've recently used. So I'm gonna use that. Um, and I'm actually gonna make this a little bit smaller. Say about 50. There we go. We use that on the edit bar there. And then I'm going to add this Mother's Day. Again, I wanna put the emphasis on Mother's Day here. Um, and so I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I think maybe about 72. Oops, actually, there we go, perfect. And then this was actually supposed to be a little bit bigger now that I look at it. We're gonna jump that up to 75 there. And then we're gonna lock our element right here. Um, go ahead and click on those dots, lock the element. And there we go, everything's locked and in position. You've got the video behind it um, and it's still moving and you can see it. Up at the very, very top, you can see that um, the time of this video and it, because I, I took the video at its entirety, it's at its entirety, but I'm gonna cut that down because I know that um, we want it to be 20 seconds or less. So the, here we go. So clicking on the background, the video, you'll see if you've, if you've highlighted the video when you go up to your edit bar and then it shows you right here with the scissors. So I'm gonna click on that and then it's gonna show you how long it is. Um, in order to adjust the time, we're gonna take this blue indicator and keep it, I think, let's see, about four, at about four seconds here. 
So I want it to just display for four seconds and move to the next um, document that we're gonna make here. I'm gonna click done. And then again, locking the document there. Um, so <laughs> I, I talk about layering and locking a lot. Um, it's particularly important when you're doing intermediate to advanced designing, especially when you're working with multiple backgrounds, layers of backgrounds that are um, videos and background colors and whatever else it is. Um, it'll really mess with the layering if you don't do that. And you can learn that the hard way like I did the other day, or we can do it the easy way. So this is just the first page. This is the first layer and we are actually done. We've completed that. Do we have any questions so far? I was hoping you would ask. Yes, we do. So somebody asked, what do you suggest for editing, learning how to edit videos? And then somebody answered, uh, Descript is great for video editing. And I see that you just did it here in Canva. Did you want to speak to that? Um, I do have a an editing app that I use. Um, it depends on what <laughs> on what um, device I'm using it on. For specifically for MacBooks, I I do use iMovie. Works a lot. Sometimes you can use the U YouTube editing as well. Um, but on my iPad, I actually have uh, a very good, easy to use comprehensive editing app. And of course, my <laughs> my brain here isn't remembering what it's called. I will have to double check that and I will follow up. I'm going to make a note of that. Um, it's a good app. You only have to pay for it once, which is great. So you don't have to keep paying monthly fees and things like that. And I can send that in the follow-up yeah, email. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Barbara. And then we had one other question. Somebody wanted to know what the psychology of music Ooh, means. That's a great question. Um, I haven't actually dipped into that myself personally, but there are a couple of things that I'm, um, especially after this webinar, want to add to it. And that is music, because we will be using music and also um, the psychology behind the language you use. So word choices, because that's also very powerful. But what I can tell from what I can tell you is that obviously music has a way of really captivating people and helping them feel those experiences and feelings and emotions that you want them to feel. For example, if you're going to the gym, you don't really want to listen to classical music or folk music. You want to listen to something that's really upbeat, right? That emphasizes and captures your motivation. <laughs> and then same goes for, um, like in this example for yoga, um, I, I was looking for relaxing music, uh, something that really just feels like I'm being liberated, right? And I got a lot of, um, I don't know how to explain it, but it was a lot of uh, Chinese, you know, inspired music that just didn't fit the bill. So just understanding how you, um, how music makes you feel and what types of music makes you feel a certain way is a very important aspect of it. And I think that discovering it from yourself your your own perspective first is important and then asking your customers and understanding what um, emotions they're having when they listen to a certain piece of music so any Thank other you. that's all for now perfect okay so let's move on here all right so that's part one i'm going to take this out and then just for our sake put this one in um, this is the second slide to our video here. And as you can see, again, you can't really see what components we have in the design aspect of it. But if I make this bigger, you can see there's a lot more texture. You still have that video of that, that steam or that, you know, just that image of heat rising, right? Um, but you, you also have an extra textured layer here. Um, this is the layer that I really um, wanted to be the creative piece to as well, uh, because it's, again, playing into that experience of hot yoga, not just regular yoga, but hot yoga. So let's give, um, let's give our attention to that and really try and 
capture that experience of what to expect. Um, I, and then we have the still image right in the middle. So again, we're using a still image and video at the same time. Um, I love those effects on, on promotional materials. You don't see them very much. I know Starbucks has done a couple, um, but it, it really just adds another creativity layer, which is fun. So um, with what we've already created, I'm going to duplicate this slide to make it easier because I don't wanna keep going to the same video and everything else. Um, so I'd rather just delete the elements on top and use the same background and then add in that extra layer of um, video again. So to give it more texture, we're gonna go to the videos. And again, it's in recently used already. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this is the video, I'll play it. Uh, there you go. And so you see the steam and that this is the image I visualize when I'm thinking of hot yoga being in you know, a steam room, something that really for me is very freeing and, you know, detoxing. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this layer on top, make sure this one's locked. Um, I've had them interchange and then lost layers. <laughs> it becomes a mess when you don't do that. So highly recommend that. I'm going to go ahead and adjust it in size here on the left side. And on the right, you can also drag out the corners too. Um, that's another thing that Camp, uh, Canva has implemented, which has been great because some elements were only adjustable on either their um, vertical sides or their horizontal sides, which made it really hard to get um, the specific size you want. Now, for the most part, elements such as squares and rectangles, they all have this middle portion where you can adjust from all four sides, which is great. Little things like that. I mean, they seem simple, but they're very time consuming, especially if, if you have to work around them. So good job, Canva. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and play that. And as you can see, it's dripping here on the right, left, and in the middle. And I think actually that's a pretty good position. I might wanna move it just a little to the left. So I'm gonna double click it. And as you can see, the image is highlighted and then I can just click where I want to and drag a little bit. So I'm gonna drag right there, click outside, press play, see what we got here. Perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the edit bar and fix this transparency um, so that we can get both backgrounds, both videos in there. And as you can see, it's already starting to mess with me here. I don't see the other layer that we have. I kind of missed it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see, if I delete this, it's hard sometimes to know which layer is on top. So we're gonna go ahead and start this one from scratch since that didn't work out. Um, okay, we're gonna pick our photo color, which we already had, same colors we used last time. I'm gonna lock it. <laughs> I'm gonna take this video and do the same as we did. I rotated it because as you can see, the original is kind of going down and we want it to go up. So I'm gonna rotate it all the way around. And hopefully, in theory, it worked yesterday and hopefully it'll work right now. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and do that. Okay, and click done. And then the transparency, one thing that I didn't actually remember, what did we have it at? Maybe it was 40. Might have been a little bit. So you want to match the transparency here. I think that's pretty close. I'm just going to eyeball it for the sake of time. Um, here we go. And then lock it. And then do the same with the next image. Let's go ahead and make that transparency first so we can see what we're working with here. 
Okay. I don't want to lose the color, but I also don't want to lose the texture. So you have to find a good balance there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the size. Oops. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to play it. Okay, so now you can see that we have all three layered backgrounds together. I want to make sure that the sweat mark or the, the sweat drips are in the right space. Um, and I think that's pretty good already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lock it. And now we have both. Although you can't see both of the images or sorry, both of the videos right now playing together simultaneously. Um, when we get into that video viewing mode, you'll be able to see it. But this is what I wanted. Okay, so very quickly, we'll go back up. Um, we use the same elements that we used last week with this um, bordered circle and then the solid circle behind her. Um, and that's just used in elements. And let me just check on the time here. I do have those elements saved already. Um, as you can see on the left side, this is my library of uploads. I have the image already that I want. It's a little bit different than last week's but I like this one, um, it gives depth and um, it just feels like it's coming at you. So, <laughs> or she's coming at you, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose her. Uh, I actually found her on Pixabay, right in Canva as well. And um, I use the background uh, remover to grab her out of her picture. Um, okay, and then I went to elements and obviously use the circle. Um, let's see here. Did I use splatter? No, I kind of used a ring here. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one for now. And we're going to make that white. Just showing you here. I know I have the image actually saved, but I'm going to fit as much as I can into, <laughs> into the demonstration before we run out of time here. Okay, so we've got that. Placing it in the middle is very, um, it's a little difficult because she's actually off, off centered as far as trying to get her into the middle of things. She's not very symmetrical in that position. So we're gonna go back to elements. We're gonna take the uh, circle out of shapes. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there. And then I'm going to um, manipulate the color, change it to white, and send it back. So position, backward. There we go. So if we go back up to what we have here, she's a lot bigger. So we got to make her bigger. So what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to take these circles, or take her out of the circles and group these circles together. I'll make it a little bit bigger to adjust. There we go. And then this also a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm gonna move it. Oops. Move in the background there. I can make that a little bigger. Okay, so we've got that. There we go. I don't know if I'm the only one that can hear my computer having a meltdown over here. <laughs> and I think it'll be okay. All right, so we have that. And then we're going to group these two elements together by uh, clicking both, holding down shift at the same time, and then going to the toolbar and grouping. So now those are together. I don't have to worry about moving them individually or adjusting. I'm gonna put it there, bring her back up. Oops, she's actually behind that image. So we're gonna go ahead and go to position, position forward and make her bigger. There we go. Okay, and I do like when her foot is actually out in that way. go. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock her and 
left the image behind her. There we go. So there we go. And this was the original. All right. So we've got her there, which is great. Now we just want to add the text here. So we already have our text saved. I want to put hot yoga in there. Let's see. Um, move her up a little bit. Okay. So if I click in my document and text T, we're going to do hot yoga. It's doing it in Brittany, so we're just going to change that here. Yoga. And I want this to be, again, really big and prominent. So we're going to do, there we go. And then we're going to move it up. And then I'm also going to make it a curved text. So we're going to go to effects. We're going to go to curve. There we go. And we're going to move it and kind of adjust it as we see fits here. I kind of like it at zero, to be honest. We're going to change that to white. Oh, interesting. So there we go. Let's see if I can make that a little wider. Now we're running behind a little here. Um, I do want to take a break. Um, and I think that now would be a good time to do it, actually. Make this a little smaller. Uh, right after I adjust this, we'll take a break here. A little better. Hmm. It's a little high. So we'll make this 120. Curve it a little less. Um, all right, so we get the picture here. And then for this specifically, I also wanted to have a little bit of animation. So if you click on animation on that top edit bar, you can choose different types of animation. And if you hover over them, they'll show you how it goes. So we've got fade. And I like breathe, especially with what we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. Make sure everything else is locked, everything is good. Um, and then we'll finish up that the bottom portion of the uh, of this layer in a minute. So why don't we go ahead and take a quick break? If you have questions, please pop them in the chat and then we'll go from there. So we'll meet back at 12 10. All right, 12 10. We will see you all then. Thank you. All righty, welcome back. Let's get started. All right. Okay, so do we have any questions that we missed here? Let's see. We did have two. Okay. Uh, do you have to cover a video with another video for texture or can you use a still image over a video? Oh, that's a good question. You probably could use a still image over the video, um, just playing around with those layerings and make sure you're you're locking them into place as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, please let us know. Um, and then um, somebody else asked, where do you find the videos that you used? Um, I found them in Canva. So let me go ahead and share my screen again here. Um, here we go. So if you go to the left hand navigation panel, you go down to videos and that's where you find them. So I have my recently used and then also um, everything else that they categorize, pre-categorize for you. So it's pretty quick to find them. You can also use your own videos um, if you use the uploads tab um, and then go to videos and then upload media. Okay, you did answer the first person question, uh, first person's question. Thank you Dwight for letting us know, actually gay. And then, um, uh, Marie wants to know, can the video features be formatted to the specs used by other selling platforms such as Etsy? Can the videos be used for Etsy? Um, I'm not too familiar with Etsy, but what happens with 
your video here is you can download it straight to your computer as an MP, MP3 or MP4 and um, upload it to, and that's how you would upload it to Facebook. That's how you like upload it to Instagram and any other platform. So I'm assuming yes. Okay, Melissa says yes, you can upload these to Etsy. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. It's a group effort here. And yes. then um, Dwight or uh, Gay wants to know uh, what brand tech is. Brand tech. Did you see that in Canva? He's typing. Okay. <laughs> so that's all the questions we have uh, right now. Okay. Oh, there she is. Um, she said, didn't you show it? Brand fetch. So brand fetch is actually, if you go to your left-hand navigation panel, you go to more and then you will find brand fetch, which is, where are you? Where did you go? There it is, brand fetch. So that's basically just this little wheelhouse of um, brands that if you needed to use Google or Bitcoin or anything, it's already there. Because if not, usually what you'd have to do is go on Google images, search, find one that you could actually use without getting in trouble and then use that. And it's usually pixelated, it's not a good quality. So this one is, um, it'll show you the logo and then a transparent background. So it's easy to use, saves a lot of time. All right, that's it for now, thank you. Perfect. So we are running a little bit behind. Um, I did wanna come back to our second layer because there was something I did miss to, to, that I want to bring to your attention when you're layering videos. So in this first um, layer, we did a four second video. Now we wanna pick that up from that four seconds on so that it's continual, right? So I clicked on the video here and then we're gonna go ahead and move this blue indicator to four seconds. And then move this one. I want this to be around, I think that's okay actually. We're okay with that. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then we're gonna lock it. So we've got that locked. We're gonna add that layer again and do the same with this one because we do actually have to, if we don't um, if we don't crop the video as far as the, the duration of it, then the slide will be longer and we don't want that. We just want it to be pretty quick, maybe around 14, 15 seconds. Go ahead and do that. Transparency. Let me get it to um, there. There we go. Play. Okay. Now take this video and then crop it to 14 seconds. 14 is right about there. Okay, we're going to hit done. We're going to lock it because we've got all those layers and thankfully it is working with us perfect and then i'm going to go to up my upload since i did already show you how to do the text i'm going to go ahead and go to uploads for now um, and use what we used before and of course where did it go <laughs> uh, there, we go. there it is i'm going to go ahead and use this image already so it's ready to go i'm going to make it bigger Okay, I'm gonna lock that image as well. We're gonna do the text. I'm gonna do hot yoga again. Fix that to the other font that we use. Let's try 120. We're going to make it white. Oops. White here. Bring it up. And then I'm going to go ahead and do effects. Make it curved. 
There we go. I think that's actually a pretty good size there. Uh, Casey, yes. Can you explain why you didn't just duplicate the page and why you're recreating it? Duplicate this page specifically. Um, I wish I had a clearer answer. I still have to do some digging on this, but when I duplicated this first page and um, adjusted it, even though my locked elements were locked, so the two backgrounds, the pink and the video was locked, when I added that third element to it, that third video, it for some reason got rid of one of the layers. And I wanna make sure that I have all three layers. I like that smoke, the steam, and then I also like the water droplets coming out. Um, I think it gives it the perfect feeling and texture. Um, I haven't found out why exactly my layers get lost sometimes, even though I lock them. So I just wanted to <laughs> make sure I had all of those elements. And sometimes you'll find that with Canva. Um, yeah, so three videos, one background, and then a whole lot of other elements you really got to keep track of. Otherwise, you might lose one and then it kind of minuses from that experience. So I think I locked this, but let me go ahead. I did put breathe. So if you look up at the edit bar, you'll see um, breathe as the animation and, and you'll be able to see that later. Lock it again. Do my second text here, which is, oops, same thing. Um, freedom. Oops. Freedom. There we go. And I believe that's at 50 here. So I'm going to adjust the fonts and then adjust the color so it pops out a little bit more. I think I like this color actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it down over here. I wanna put it by her foot, right there. Use effects, use curve. Um, I want it to curve the other way. So I have to go back to the scale and make it actually um, negative. I think it'll be around here. So I'm gonna move it again, reposition it to see what kind of circle we're working with here. Um, and then I'm going to rotate it so that it's curved with that circle. There we go. I'm going to move it up. It's pretty good. I do want that. Uh, actually, we'll leave that unanimated. We've already done an animation. So we'll leave that unanimated. Put it right there. Rotate it to fit go, lock it, and then do the other part of our text, which is flexibility and tranquility is what I said. Do the same here. We've got 50, we've got the same um, font here. Color needs to be changed and then we just need to drop it down and use um, the effects here, curved effects. And again, we're working with negative, so we gotta bring it down to negative, get to the point where we can actually outline the circle here, move it up, try and get it in line as close as possible, perfect. We'll go ahead and lock that. I think that's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and lock that. All right, that's layer three, right? We're almost there. Here's the home stretch. So this last layer, if we go back up, I'm gonna delete this and bring it in here. Oops. This last layer is the call to action, clear call to action, book now, 1999, um, QR code, I, I wanted that element so you can see how to do it with a video. I don't know. Um, I think you would probably do, you, you could put it in there. You wouldn't have to, um, but also your website will suffice. So just thinking about that in, in context, um, if you're using a video, will the QR code really be an effective way? Um, but for the purpose of this demo, I, I just want you to know how to do that. 
So, all right, we already have this copied, um, just as you mentioned, it's easier to copy, right? So I copied it and I'm not adding that third video. So it'll work this way. Um, otherwise, there are some problems. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm gonna text or type T to get my text. And then we're gonna say book now for 19.99. Buy one, get one free experience for 19.99. So this first text is going to be Brittany again. We're gonna do it bigger, remembering text hierarchy here. Okay. There we go. And then we're gonna also make that Brittany. Oops, I think I have cap locks on here. Let's retype that. Perfect, we're gonna bring it up. There we go, probably right about, will those grid lines help you a little bit? I think that might be a little too high. So right, just right above the center. So we have room for the QR code. Um, we're going to make 1999 a lot bigger than that. Let's say 120. There we go. And then the QR code. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that into place again. And since I copied this video, just be mindful that you're copying exactly the clip that we clipped it at four seconds, right? Um, if you needed anything different, you would have to adjust it um, manually. And then we'll go to more. So left-hand side navigation panel, more QR code. I'm gonna go ahead and basically you just um, copy and paste into there. And then I'll alternate here and make a fake one. If I can just get this zoom toolbar out of the way. If you just copy and paste, it's as simple as copying a URL putting it in there and then it generates the code for you. And then there it is. You can adjust the size there. Same goes with embedding um, maps and video. It's just as easy as that. So we'll put that there. And then that last piece that we had, I think yeah, that last piece that we have is, <clears throat> well, two things actually, another text. So do the text. And it's for our website, right? There we go. Uh, www.iyoga.com. We wanna actually make that black and a little bit smaller. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna drop that size down to 30. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and move that a little bit downward. Here we go. Use those grid lines to help you find the middle. There it is. Lock it in place. And I think we're good on this one. Um, so that last component that I have here is the music, okay? The music is very important um, and a very important aspect of it. So if you go to audio, you'll find all different types. And there again, pre-categorized, we have epic, travel, trap, and you can even search whatever, what have you. I already know the perfect one I wanted for this. It took a while. So give yourself some time to find that perfect, um, perfect sound for it. And basically all you do for the music is you just drag it over. And then as you can see, it's on the left side. Um, and then you can play it. So there's just a sample of what music I'm gonna have go along with this. We've got our three layers here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this extra one and then we'll watch what we have. This is kind of where Canva gets a little tricky. There we go. So is cooperating, that's great. All right, 
So we've got our three, right? And, and they're just flat photos at this point, but we're gonna make that into the video and we're gonna watch it. it right now it's at 22 seconds. I kind of like to have it at just a you know, solid 20 seconds. Um, but for the sake of time, let's go ahead and hope that this lets us watch it. <laughs> All right, so here's what we come up with. And there we go. All right. So that is the end of the demonstration. As you can see, there were a little bit of timing issues. You wanna go ahead and play around with those specifically, um, especially when you're cutting and editing videos. I could, let's see. Yeah, you know, I will find the actual, the finished product um, and you can, and you can compare the difference between the timing that you have with um, with your videos. But that's also an important detail that you'll learn to grasp as well. Um, I did have that last portion of the webinar uh, for the advanced tips that we didn't get to. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time. Usually this class is about two hours and I think I need that extra 30 minutes, but we can send that to you uh, via email. I'll have that presentation ready for you. And then you can see uh, specifically, um, we're going over the things that we implemented in the, the live demo, but we're also going over things like uh, a splatter shatter effect that's advanced um, and then popping those images out of different images as well. So thank you so much. All right, thanks so much, Stacey. Uh, I always learn so much about layering and grouping and it's just it's such a great product when it's done, it's always so exciting. So design is an art, as you can see. If you wanna work with Stacy, please give us a call and we're happy to connect you with her. There's no charge for our services. We do have some classes coming up that I wanted to let you know about. We have Find Your LinkedIn Siz Sizzle Google AdWords, and then create your vision board for success. You can use your Canvas skills in that one, so you can practice what you've learned today. You can also use cut and paste if you prefer with newspapers or magazines, but you can use Canva in that class. And then cybersecurity for small business. I will let you know we have a teaser. Etsy is coming up as well. We just don't have that online yet, but we do have an Etsy uh, class coming up. Our summer entrepreneurial classes have been scheduled and they are filling up. If you're interested in learning the A, Bs, and Cs of being an entrepreneur, we have a class starting on the 1st from 4 to 6.30 in English and then one in Spanish on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5.30 to 7.30 at night, uh, starting on the 15th. We would love to hear from you. We're here for whatever your business needs are. Thanks so much for coming. Have a great day. Thank you, Barbara.